Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about reloads, specifically speed and emergency reloads. Now, the way I define these two is like this. For a speed reload, the slide is forward, there's a round in the chamber. I have some number of rounds remaining in a partial magazine inside the weapon. All right. To perform the speed reload, I'm going to eject the partial magazine and insert a full magazine into the gun. Now, if I'm shooting a match, if I'm shooting a competition, this is pre-planned. I've decided that this is the point in the stage where I need to reload in order to shoot it as efficiently as possible to maximize my score. Now, for the real world, there are times where I may have a partial magazine in a firearm, but I need to plus that gun up now with a sense of urgency. So that might be where you might do this sort of reload in a real event, right? Emergency reload is like this. Slide is locked to the rear, empty chamber, empty magazine in the gun. The gun is completely empty, which is why this is an emergency reload. If I'm shooting a drill, if I'm shooting a match, I have run dry on ammo. My time will continue, but I can't put any more rounds onto targets until I get this gun back up and running. If this is a real event, if my weapon isn't capable of firing, it's doing me no good. I need to get that weapon up and running as rapidly as possible to stay in the fight. So speed reload versus emergency reload. So the actual technique, the actual mechanics for performing these reloads are identical with the exception of bringing the slide forward into battery on the emergency also called slide lock reload. Otherwise, they're performed exactly the same way. So the first thing we have to do is we have to get this magazine out of the gun, right? We want gravity to help. We don't want to be fighting gravity as we do this. The reason magazines stick in your pistol most of the time is because you weren't letting gravity get the magazine out of the gun for you. If you tilt, angle the gun, move that magazine well to a disadvantageous position prior to hitting the magazine eject button, it's not gonna fall free, right? So depending on the size of the gun and the size of your hands, you may have to shift the gun in your hands. It may have to shift. It should still be straight up and down though, so that gravity will eject the magazine. If I shift and I bring it here, it may not fall free with any sort of reliability, and now I'm gonna to have to strip the magazine and waste precious time doing that. So when it comes time to eject the magazine, I just let gravity do its job. Magazine falls free, then I bring the gun into a relaxed position in front of me. Elbow bent, nice and relaxed. I don't try to find, unlike a lot of my other techniques, if you've been to one of my classes, you hear me talk a lot about physical reference points, index points to kind of give your technique a reference marker in space. I do not do that with the elbow on the reload for a reason I'll tell you about in a minute. Just let it be comfortable and relaxed floating in space. I'm going to point the magazine well at the fresh magazines on my belt. So this opening is actually gonna be angled and pointing towards where the magazines are on my belt. That way as this hand comes free, it falls right into place to insert the magazine. We all get taught from our most basic firearms training that when we reload the pistol, we should be grabbing the magazine like this. Finger along the front of the magazine, tip of the finger at the tip of the first bullet, the top bullet of the magazine. What happens in practice more often than not though, is we wind up grabbing the magazine like this. This creates problems when we try to load the gun because the angles are no longer straight. If I grab it the right way, and I point that magazine well at the magazines, it goes right into place. If I grab it the wrong way, now I fumble the reload. The key to grabbing the magazine the correct way is to use a physical reference point for your technique. I know where that base plate on that magazine has to hit the palm of my hand in order for my finger to be in exactly the right place on the magazine. 
So what I do then is I drive that point to the top of the base plate, right to the top of the base plate, and when I grab the magazine, it's in the right orientation. The reason people mess this up is subconsciously, we want to grab the part of the magazine that's out of the pouch. But if I grab the part of the magazine that's out of the pouch, I wind up with this, and the angles are no longer straight. So instead, figure out what that physical reference point is, drive it to the magazine, and you're gonna be lined up correctly. So a few more times on the speed reload, and then we'll talk about manipulating the slide for the emergency reload. I'm up on target, I decide it's time to reload. My finger comes off the trigger, roll the weapon in my hand as I need to, eject the magazine, but it doesn't have any do its work. Same time I'm driving this hand to the fresh magazine, hitting the base plate of the magazine with that physical reference point on the palm of my hand. This hand relaxes as it comes in, pointing the magazine well opening at the fresh magazine. I'm now looking at the opening. This magazine gets snatched out. I drop the elbow. Everything is now lined up. Index, insert, drive. Re-establish my shooting grip, rolling it onto the gun as I move back out onto target, and I'm ready to fire again. And that's the speed reload. Now we'll talk about the emergency reload and how that differs. So the only difference in the way I define them between a speed reload and an emergency reload is the condition of the gun. In the emergency reload, the slide is locked to the rear, empty chamber, empty magazine. So the only additional step I have is bringing the slide back into battery after I insert a fresh magazine. So here's how that's gonna go down. I'm up on target, I feel the slide locked to the rear. I shouldn't be confused by this. If you shoot this pistol enough, you're going to be able to feel that recoil impulse change. You're going to know the slide lock to the rear, right? You shouldn't be sitting here pulling the trigger on an empty weapon. You should instantly know the condition of your gun. Now it's time to reload it, time to get back into the fight. So this starts out the same way. I let gravity do its work. I reach for the fresh magazine. This one gets ejected. I point the magazine well opening at the fresh magazine. This hand uses the physical reference point, the index point, on the base plate of that magazine. Grabs the magazine in the correct orientation, finger towards the bullets. I look inside the magazine well. Once I relax my elbows, everything lines up. Index, insert, drive. Now as I'm coming back up and reestablishing my grip, here's where the slide gets brought forward. Right? There's a few different ways to do this depending on your hand size and on the firearm you're using. My hands are actually big enough that I can do it with the firing hand, even on a 2011, which most people cannot do. Most people on a 2011 are gonna wind up hitting that lever with this thumb. So as you bring the magazine in, index insert drive, as I'm reestablishing my shooting grip, see where this thumb goes? Now I'm back on target and the gun's been plussed up. I'm ready to go. For some of you who are using different weapons platforms, or if your hands are large enough, like mine, you might be hitting this lever with the firing hand as you reload the gun. That would look something like this. So I eject the magazine, index insert drive, back up on target. There are two other techniques that are commonly used to return the slide into battery after inserting a fresh magazine during a slide lock reload. Um, one, I used to use myself quite a bit when I shot Glocks, both for work and in competition. Glocks and some other firearms can be made to somewhat reliably auto forward the slide if you insert the magazine strongly enough, really slam it home into the gun. The problem is that no matter how reliably you can do it, it is still not as reliable as using the slide lock lever. The other thing you'll see is you'll see people manipulate the slide in some sort of overt dynamic fashion as opposed to simply hitting the slide lock lever. Guys will insert the magazine and they'll power stroke or slingshot the slide 
to bring that slide forward onto the full magazine. Some of the arguments you hear about this are that it's a gross motor skill, you'll be able to perform it under stress, whereas the slide lock lever is a fine motor skill and you won't be able to perform that under stress. So for all of my gross motor skill advocates out there who manipulate the slide over the top, I have one simple question for you. So this lever here is a fine motor skill. We're establishing that, right? Whether we agree with that or not, we'll say that. We'll just take that as an assumption. This is a fine motor skill. So if we're avoiding this because it's a fine motor skill, what about the even smaller button we already used to eject the magazine? So this, by the definition used in this argument, is a fine motor skill. But every single one of us gets the magazine out in that fashion, right? So we can be trusted to train this as a technique, but we can't be trusted to train that as a technique. That doesn't hold water for me logically. I, I don't think that's a sound assumption. If I can manipulate this under stress, I can definitely manipulate that under stress. The movements aren't drastically different in terms of dexterity requirement. I have another question for you. So, gross motor skill versus fine motor skill. By the definition used in this argument, pulling the trigger is a fine motor skill. That is the most important task we conduct with a firearm, the most crucial one. So we can train that fine motor skill, but we can't train this one. It just doesn't make sense to me. One other quick technical note that I wanted to go over, and that's the reason why we don't want to have a physical reference point with the elbows position during our reload. In the real world, we're often going to be moving as we reload, whether laterally, vertically, we're gonna be changing the position of our body in space as we reload, whether in competition or in conflict. So because we're going to be moving, it doesn't do us any good to have this locked into one set rigid position. Instead, we wanna have this flexible and mobile. And what gives us our precision, our dexterity in inserting the magazine is our vision. Vision drives shooting in every aspect, this as much as any other. So as I'm inserting the magazine, if I'm in movement, I'm looking the magazine in as I move. I'm looking the magazine in as I move. And this stays fluid, flexible, relaxed, enabling me to move in an efficient manner. And that's very important. So this is a quick down and dirty on my thoughts on emergency and speed reloads. I hope you enjoyed it, and hopefully I'll get a chance to see all of you on the range soon. Take care.